Hello and welcome. If you're someone who's building a van, dreaming about a van, or designing a van, and you, like me, know absolutely nothing about 12 volt wiring, watch this video because I built that. And I'm going to share with you how I did it. Welcome to vanofaction.com and today we're having a conversation about selecting the battery that's going to work best for you. If you find this useful, please give us a like, a share, and by all means subscribe. If there's something we've missed, leave it in a comment. I answer everything. Let's get started. When you look at this system, it can look very complicated. If you don't know what you're looking at, it can look way over the top and be very intimidating. I know I've been there. But I use the eating the elephant process, or for my American friends, process in this one, one little system at a time. Because when you think about the electricity, you're either generating electricity, you're storing electricity, or you're using electricity. Today, we're going to talk about storing electricity. We're going to talk about our batteries. It doesn't matter how you generate your electricity. If you're not using it immediately, you're going to be storing it someplace. So, you're going to be storing it in a battery or a bank of batteries. And this is the first thing that we need to think about when we start designing our system is what kind of a battery do we need? No, 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 that's not right. The first thing you have to think about and not make a decision about, but always have the first, always have right in the back of your head is, is how much money am I prepared to spend? And maybe how much money can I afford to spend? How much money do I have to spend? How much money will my life, will my wife let me spend? Whatever those questions are, how much is my total budget? How much am I trying to do this for? Not just the storage, not just the generation, but also the using of. Because this is a heat gun. Research has told us that this heat gun on a 100 amp battery, fully charged, a heat gun will run for about a little over five hours on high. This is an LED light. You can mount it inside or outside your van. Research has showed us that on a 100 amp hour ba battery, fully charged, will run this light for weeks. Weeks. When you want to buy a fridge or a cooler, and you're going to want that in your van, you can buy a fridge that's more like a heat gun or more like an LED light. The choice is yours. Some are, some are going to be more expensive than the other. You have to decide. It may be to your advantage to spend more money on the cooler so you can spend less money on the storage system for the energy, or maybe spend less money on the cooler and spend more money on the storage system. You have to figure that part out, but you have to have it in the back of your head. So let's start here first off, storing our energy that we're creating that we're not using immediately in a battery. Right here, I wanna pause for just a moment. There are three concepts that you need to have in your head when we're talking about battery storage systems. And they really make things seem complicated, but once you get them figured out, they're really not that bad at all. So just walk with me on this, and I hope I can make this clear. The first one is the charge profile. Every type of battery has a different charge profile. And what that means is, as the energy comes into that battery, if it comes in in, the certain, in a certain form, a certain shape, I don't know what the words are, but if it comes in the right way, the battery charges better and stays healthier for a longer period of time. That's the charge profile. You don't have to worry about anything other than knowing that that's the case because you don't take your energy directly from where it's being created and plug it right into the battery. There's a, a step in between called the charge controller. doesn't matter where the energy is coming from. It goes through a charge controller first and before it feeds the battery. That charge controller can be programmed to, to generate or create the right charge profile for the battery type that you have. You need to be aware of it. The information's all in your manual. There's nothing to it. In the manual for your battery, it'll tell you what you need to have. And the charge controller will be is so is very easy to program. You just need to know you have to do that. That's number one. Number two is you need to have some form of battery management system. And what that means is, as you place loads on the battery, the, the, the battery just can't just get everything sucked out of it all at once. That's bad for it. There's, there's, there needs to be a program or some kind of a system to manage the way the battery becomes emptier and emptier and emptier. Now, you can buy at Amazon or somewhere else, you can buy uh, battery management modules for your system. Again, 
just because of me and how little I know about this, you can buy batteries that have a built-in battery management system. It's already there. It comes right off the shelf with a system built into the box that manages it. That's what I did. That's what I did. You can make it very complicated or you can make it very simple. That's number two, the battery management system. And number three is the charge controller. I mentioned that just a minute ago. The energy that's being created, no matter where it's being created from, has to go through something to make sure it's the proper configuration for the battery type that you have that you're storing it in. And you do that with a charge controller. We're going to talk about that more about that though in the creation side of it. But everything has to go through a charge controller to get into the battery. So those are the three, three things I just wanted to touch on. Let's get back to just talking about batteries in general. Now we all have needs. I understand that. And what we have to determine is electrically what our individual needs are in our van. And now here you can fall into a rabbit hole of mathematics, figuring out every light and plug and charge port and appliance you're going to have in your van, the startup load, the carry load, the accumulated load. You can, spend, you can do mathematics for weeks on this if you want to. And there's a bunch of sites online that'll show you exactly how to do that if you want, you know, if you choose to do that. Personally, I don't care that much. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's way over the top. My first step was to try and get my head around how big a user I was going to be, how heavy a user we're, we're going to be. I asked questions like, when am I going to use my van? Am I going to be a full-time van dweller? And am I going to be a weekend van dweller? Am I going to be an extended trip van dweller? Where am I going to be using it? Am I going to be using it in warm places? Or am I going to be using it in moderate places? Or am I going to be using it in the Arctic in really cold places? Do I need, and that helps you determine what you're gonna need. Am I gonna need an air conditioner? Am I gonna need a furnace? Am I gonna need a hot water heater? Am I gonna need, you know, am I, how heavy am I gonna be? And at the end of the day, I came to the conclusion that for our purposes, our van is going, we're going to be moderate to light users of electricity. I'm not gonna have a furnace. I'm not, I'm not gonna be in any place where there's snow on the ground in that van. I'm just not doing it. That's not, that's not an interest that I have. So, I'm gonna be moderate to light using. We have lots of lights, lots of charge ports. We're not gonna want for anything. But you have to remember too, that even though you may have a whole bank of lights and a whole bank of chargers, you're only gonna use those when you're in the van. You're only gonna use those when you need them. The lights aren't on all the time. So are you a heavy user, a moderate user, a light user? Categorize yourself that way first. So now we have a rough idea of what kind of user you're going to be, how much energy you're going to need to, to live comfortably. That gives you an idea of how much energy you need to store to be able to live comfortably. Great, that's a great ballpark to be playing in. This is all subject to change, but this is a starting point. So now we need to understand that there are a lot of different types of batteries the way they're put together, a lot of different styles of batteries. And the difference in construction in the battery will determine the life expectancy of the battery. It'll determine the efficiency of the battery. It'll determine the weight of the battery. And it'll also determine the price of the battery. So now all we have to do is figure out which one suits you best for your needs. And the first thing I thought about was available power. How much power is going to be available to me if I store it in this particular battery? Now, just as an aside here, I wanna make it absolutely clear that the purpose of this video is to share my ideas and my experience, hopefully make your journey a little bit easier. I'm not endorsing any particular product. I have absolutely no affiliate links any place. I'm not being paid by anybody for anything that I'm saying. Having said that, and understanding and recognizing in myself that I know dick about this, I didn't wanna make it any harder for myself than I had to, and so I, felt it was in my best interest to buy components that were all manufactured to play nice together. It's possible to go, on, to go on to Amazon and buy a whole lot of really cheap components and try to wire them together and try and get them to talk to each other, but that's way above my pay grade. I thought it would be to my personal advantage to spend a little bit more and buy components that were designed right out of the gate to be able to work together. So I chose to use Renergy products. This is a, a Renergy battery. I have a Renergy charge controller and a Ren and Renergy solar panels. For me, that just made my life a lot easier. I'm not suggesting that that's something that you should do, but if you're as ignorant about this as I am, and if you can afford it, I would recommend you give it some thought. Now, having said that, let's talk about available energy because this is one of those places where the industry really messes with us and tries to make it difficult, okay? They really, they, they, it can be very confusing. See, batteries are sold by how much energy they store. 
not by how much energy they give you. They're sold by how much energy they store. And they're sold in units, amp units, they're called amp hours. And a typical one, the average one would be 100 amp hours. So a 100 amp hour lead acid battery will store 100 amp hours of energy. A 100 amp hour lithium battery will store 100 amp hours of energy. They sound the same, sounds like the same thing. But the 100 amp hour lead acid battery can only be safely discharged to 50% of its capacity, which means it only has 50 amp hours available to you to use. If you go below 50%, you start harming the battery. You start hurting the cells. You can do irreparable harm and the battery life will shorten. It might even be ruined altogether. So a 100 amp a lead acid battery has 50 amp hours of energy store available to you. A 100 amp hour lithium battery, on the other hand, can be discharged up, they say up to 100%, 95 to 100%. So a 100 amp hour lithium battery has 100 amp hours of energy available to you. 95 amp, amp hours of energy available to you. I'm saying 95 to be conservative. The, the literature all says you can do discharge of 100%. So, in theory, even though they sound the same, you actually need two lead acid batteries to give you the same available power that one lithium battery gives to you. Is that important? Well, it can be, and it can be for a couple of different reasons. One is space. Do you have, have enough room to have twice as many batteries, uh, lead acid batteries, as you would have for the lithium batteries? In my particular case, I didn't want to have four batteries if I could get by with two. That made me happy. So space is a consideration. Weight is also a consideration because people are always going on about how much weight are we adding to these vehicles is going to impact on our wear and our tires, is going to impact on our gas mileage, is going to impact on the, on the drivability. How much weight are we adding? That may be a major consideration depending on how many batteries you want to have. A lead acid battery weighs about 66 pounds. Two of them, do the math. Uh, you do the math, I'm not doing it, 120, 120, 130 pounds. A lithium battery weighs 40 pounds. So one lithium battery or two lead acid batteries, you're talking the same amount of energy stored the lead acid batteries take up twice as much space and weigh four or five times more, more weight. Is that a consideration? Something you want to think about. For some people it won't matter, for some people it will. And of course, buried in all of this is the cost as well. We can't forget about how much things are going to cost. You know, as interesting as this is, and I can tell you're on the edge of your seat, it's far too nice a day to stay in the shop, so let's go for a bit of a walk too. You see, I'm an old man. And as an old man, I am more and more aware of my life expectancy. And I'm going to suggest to you that you want to consider the life expectancy of your batteries as well when you're designing your system. Ask yourself, how long am I going to own this van for? Am I just flipping it or is it going to be long term? How often do I want to replace my batteries? Am I going to be, do I want to do it often or do I want to do something that's going to last a long, long time? And sometimes the short term is the right answer. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong. You see, when they sell batteries, they sell them, they rate them by what they call charge cycles. I have no idea what that means, but it doesn't matter what type of battery it is, they all refer to charge cycles. It means the same thing for every one of them. A lead acid battery is estimated to be work to last 300 charge cycles. And then it's not going to stop working all of a sudden. It's just going to, it'll start to uh, diminish in its ability to hold a charge and all the rest of it. A lithium battery, on the other hand, is rated to last 3,000 charge cycles. Ten times longer. You have to ask yourself, is that important? For some people it will be, for some people it won't. But the life expectancy of your battery will determine the type of battery that you want to use and the type of battery that you want to buy. Certainly, the longer they last, the more expensive they are. So again, your budget's going to come into that. Just keep making little notes, checking little boxes, and you'll find your way to the proper end. Another consideration you might have is the environment. I want to come here, down here for this particular part of the video. And by the environment, I'm not talking about the environment that you're traveling in. All batteries, 
lithium batteries, lead acid batteries, all batteries are safe to have in the cab with you. There's no issues there at all. But not all batteries are, are the same when it comes to the effect on the environment when they're being manufactured. For some people, that will be a consideration. And God bless those people. I'm not sure that I take it as seriously as a lot of people do, but those who do, thank you. Those who don't, that's okay too. We gotta get through this together. But some batteries will definitely have a greater impact on the overall environment than others when they're being made. So there's a very general discussion on things to think about when you're designing your system and looking in terms of how much storage or what kind of storage should I use. You, if you go through all those steps, you'll figure out what type of battery you really like to have. But then the question becomes, well, how many do I need? And the way I arrived at that for myself was I thought, well, I'm going to work at, look at this a little differently. I know I don't need to be able to store any more energy than I can generate. And so how much energy can I generate? And on the roof of my van, there's only so much space available for solar panels. And in my particular case, I felt I was going to top out somewhere around 500 watts on the roof max. That'd be it. So I worked backwards from there and I thought, well, how much, how much will solar panels generate? And I found out that two 100 watt, 12 volt solar panels on an ideal day will recharge a 100 amp hour battery. That's how much they'll generate. Now, I know a 100 amp hour battery is gonna run a heat gun for over five hours. That's probably more energy than I need. But to be safe, I wanna be, I wanna, be really comfortable. So uh, I chose to have 200 amp hours available energy to me. So that could be four lead acid batteries at 240 pounds added weight, or it could be two lithium batteries at 40 pounds added weight, less space, less space used. And because I was, I, I felt comfortable with the dollar to dollar expenditure, I went that route and I bought two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, but I only put 300 watts of uh, solar power on the roof to begin with, because I don't believe that I'm ever going to be depleted anywhere near 100 amp hours at a time. I just don't think that's gonna be the case because I have the capability of generating and that'll be another video. So I felt that if I had 200 amp hours of energy available to me, I would be comfortable. And that's what I designed my system around. And we were on the road for seven weeks. And I have to tell you, we were not disappointed at all. It worked absolutely fine. We had more capacity than we needed. Truthfully, if I wasn't such a nervous Nelly, probably 100 amp hours could very well have been enough. And we're running all our lights. As I say, we have lights in the ceiling, lights over the kitchen, reading lights, charging our phones, charging our computers. We also have a one or a 97 liter Dometic refrigerator freezer cooler as a dual zone. Half of it was set to freezer mode. We were making ice for seven weeks using our, using our solar power and the battery energy that we had saved. We had two fans in our ceiling. We were running at least one fan all night long. We never used more than 10 to 12 amp hours of energy overnight. We were, we had lots of capacity. I like the idea of the life cycle, of uh, the life expectancy being as old as I am. I've never got to change these batteries, which is good. And this is a van that I'm not expecting to sell. I want to keep it for a while. So I wanted something that was going to be reliable. Those are choices you have to make. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, if there's something I've missed, please add it in the comment below. I answer everything. If you do find it useful, please give me a like and a share. And by all means, subscribe. I'll be doing other videos on solar panels, on DC to DC, I'm, I'm sorry, another video on how to generate electricity and another video on how to use electricity. Cheers.